Hello, I am Kathy Adams Clark, and thank you very much for joining me on my channel today. This video will be about setting up your bridge 2024. In the Adobe products right now, we have bridge 1401, 14.0.1. We have Photoshop 25.3. Point one. We have Adobe Camera Raw 16.1 and we have Lightroom 13.1. To maximize your processing abilities in photography, you'll need to download each one of those. Those of you that know me know that I use Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop, and then Lightroom. If you're going to use Lightroom, then you still want to go ahead and download Lightroom, Photoshop, Bridge, and Adobe Camera Raw because we end up using them all interchangeably. When you are at your Adobe Creative Cloud site, you will see that your Photoshop, your Bridge, your Lightroom are all up to date. If you're going to use Adobe Camera Raw, then you'll download Adobe Camera Raw. It's one of your plugins. So you just want to make sure that everything's up to date. Back in Bridge, click on your Bridge, and then we have Camera Raw Preferences and we have Settings. That's what this video will concentrate on. So let's set up your Bridge using your Camera Raw Preferences first. So click on that, and we get Camera Raw Preferences. In your Preferences, the very first one is General, and you can see everything that I have set under General. I use a darker theme. If you would like to use lighter, then you can click Lightest, or if you just want to use the default, then you can use the default. Under Panels, show rich tool tips. Otherwise, we're not using anything under field, film, film strip, show contextual menu hints on hover. This is good, especially if you're a beginner. Zoom and pan, just leave them unclicked as they are. File handling, this is really important. First one wasn't so much, but this one really is. Sidecars, always use sidecar XMP files. Your options are embed XMP and DNG or ignore sidecar XMP files. If you don't know what an XMP file is, it's the file that contains all of your processing. So everything that you ever did to that photo is contained in a separate file called an XMP file. It has an extension of XMP. We always want to use XMP files. And you don't want to throw them away either. If you throw them away, you have none of your processing information at all, and your photo reverts back to exactly like it came out of the camera with nothing done to it. So always use Sidecar XMP files. And then you can see how I have it set for handling JPEGs and TIFFs. Under Performance, use graphic processors. I've just got it set to auto. And how big your cache is. Cache are little bitty thumbnails of your photos that are saved so that the computer will work a little faster every time. I've got it set for five gigabytes. This purge cache, every once in a while you will want to purge cache, especially when you haven't worked on these files for years. There's no reason for you to have little tiny thumbnails of them hanging around on your computer. And this is just your location where your cache is stored. Defaults, the only one that I have clicked up at the top is an enable HDR editing by default for HDR photos. And then for workflow, you will see it if you continue on through my videos where it applies. But your color space, I want it set to display P3. You have several options here, Adobe RGB, Color Match, Pro Photo, but I've got mine set to display P3. Depth, 16 bits per channel. And then my default size, image size, I've got the resolution set to 240. Um, this is just that every time I open up a photo, 
photo in Adobe Camera Raw. It's going to go into the Color Space Display P3. It's going to go to 16 bits per channel. And the resolution is going to be 240 pixels per inch, which is what came out of the camera. So that's your general Camera Raw preferences. Click OK, and that's done. Now we still have one more, and that one is more complicated because it contains more information, and that's called your bridge settings. You see? Lots. So let's tackle it and go to it. So the first one under general is super important. Double click edits camera raw settings in bridge. That means that if I double click on a photograph when I'm in bridge, it's automatically going to open it in Adobe Camera Raw. So double click a photograph and it automatically opens in Adobe Camera Raw. This just makes life really easy because of processing. Under here, favorites, computer desktop documents, and then Kathy Adams Clark. That will probably be your computer name for you. Zip and unzip in the same folder. Click to advanced. I don't have anything set up at the top and my language is English. Cache, remember we talked about that just a little bit ago. My cache right here, this is where we can increase the size, keep 100% previews in cache, yes. And then we're not going to purge or compact unless we want to. Cache management, this is where you can compact your cache Purge all of your cache. So this is all the photos that you have worked on, those little tiny thumbnails that are kept so that your computer can operate a little bit faster. We can purge all of those or purge all the local cache files. I'll do this periodically, but we're not going to set it right now. Content. Open new content tab with the following folder. And the only one that I have set is home. Workspace behavior, unset there. Export, number of photos of export jobs to keep in job list. I don't do a lot of this, so I just have mine set as it came, 120. File type associations, super, super important, especially if you're new to the Adobe products. File type association is you're telling your computer when you see a file with this file extension, open it with this software. So if you look right down here where my cursor is, Canon Camera Raw, these are our CRWs, our CR2s, and our CR3s. I always want these to be opened by Adobe Photoshop. The same thing would be down here. When we scroll on down, you will notice that we've got the uh, NEFs, so we want them to be opened up for Adobe Photoshop. So if you've been using another software and it's been automatically opening up your photos, maybe you've been using iPhoto or one of the photo programs that came on your PC, this is where you will unclick that and move everything over to Adobe Photoshop. And then you'll notice that you've got some other file extensions in there as well. If you ever notice that they're being opened by a software that you don't think is right, this is where you can make that correction. Interface, do you want your colors to be dark? Do you want them to be lighter dark or do you want them to be lighter? This is where you can make a decision how you want your software to look. Personally, I prefer it to be a little on the dark side, but not totally black. And this is where you can go in there and just make those changes for your preferences. Keywords, watch for a video on this because keywords are very important. Automatically apply parent keywords, click that, and also read hierarchical keywords. I'll explain what that means later, but it's really important. Labels and ratings, you're going to rate your photos. So if you take 50 photos of the same bird at the same time in the same setting, you want to know which ones are your best ones and which ones are not. This is where we can use stars or this is where we can use colors. I personally use stars. So this is where you can work with that. Media cache, do not delete cache files automatically. Once again, those cache files, those little bitty tiny thumbnails that are saved um, so that your computer can work a little faster. 
Or if you want to, you can say that you want these set automatically to be deleted at a certain time. I don't like that. Metadata. Now, metadata is also super important because this is where we're going to add our copyright information. Each one of these can be totally clicked or totally unclicked by clicking the top item, click or unclick. We don't need anything with file properties. We don't need anything with attributes. We don't need anything with listing graphic outputs. We don't need anything for list, listing graphic presets. We don't need anything for IPTC legacy, IPTC, International Press Telecommunications Committee. This is where the press committee decided where we would put our copyright information so that all the software products around the world could read it. So we don't use legacy, but we do use IPTC core. So under IPTC core, remember we can click that top one and all of them will click, will select or all of them will unselect. I use my name, my address, my telephone number, my email address, my website. I also click description and I also click keywords. And then I also click credit line. That means that underneath the photo in a magazine, it'll say Kathy Adams Clark slash KAC Productions. The source, copyright notice. I'm going to pull down a tab at one point and tell the people that this is a copyrighted photograph. And then copyright status and rights uses and terms. We'll come to this later. IPT extension, we don't need any of those. Camera data, we don't need any of those. And by the way, that is permanently embedded in each photograph. So you'll always be able to retrieve it at another time if you want to. We're just not going to look at it all the time. Fonts, we don't need that. Linked files, we don't need that. GPS, we don't need that. Camera raw, we don't need that. Audio, we don't need that. Video, we don't need that. Edit history, we don't need that. D-I-C-O-M, we don't need that. We don't need plates and we don't need document swaths. And that means we have them all. Down at the bottom, hide empty fields. So any field that's empty, we're not going to see it. We can always go retrieve it if we want to, but we're not going to see it on a day-to-day -day basis and show metadata placard. Okay. Got that one. Output, click the top one, view PDF after export. Next one, unclick, preserve embedded color profile. And then the other three, we are going to go ahead and click on those as well. Playback, stack playback frame, rates per second. It's set at two, so I'm going to leave it at two. Audios, I've got those clicked as they came out of the package. Video, I've got those clicked as they came out of the package as well. Next one, startup scripts. I want the startup script for Adobe Bridge to start up every time I click on that program. The same thing with Adobe Photoshop. I want the startup scripts to start. So I've got those clicked. Everything else in here, I'm not using that much. And you notice here's an old bridge right here. And so we've just got those set. Thumbnails, performance and handling files. We're telling the Adobe product, don't open anything that's over 100 megabytes, just so that you know, you know that there's going to be a problem because that's such a big file. And then we've got the other three checked. And then underneath each one of my photos in Adobe Bridge, I want the date created and I want the description. If you want the con the keywords to show or the size to show, then, sh then click those. You notice that you've also got all different kinds of stuff. So whatever it turns out you need when you're processing your photos, go ahead and click them here. But I found over the years that I really just need the date created and the descriptions. Video, we've got um, a preview video on mouse hover just because that's the way it came. And then down on the bottom under workflow, maximum number of workflow jobs to keep on the job list. We saw this in one of the other preferences and I've just got them set as the way that they came out of the software when I opened it. So going back to general, don't forget to click OK to save all those changes that we just did. And that, my friend, is how you set up your bridge. 
Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you've liked this. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them down there in the comments section, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. Thanks very much. And if you would like to subscribe so that you're notified next time I, I place a video online, do the subscription. So thank you very much for joining me today. I'm Kathy Adams Clark. Join me on my other videos as I walk you through Bridge and Adobe Camera Raw. Thanks.